Welcome to a brand new fortnightly mini-series where I'll be documenting as much of the final experiment fallout as I can. This is episode one and so much has happened already. Welcome to your final experiment review. Hello everyone and welcome along to this final experiment review video with me, Simon and Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a massive thank you to the sponsors of this video, Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time all in one place, all on your terms. And you can start a completely personalized website with the brand new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint. You can choose from professionally curated layout and styling options to build a unique online presence from the ground up, tailored to your brand or business and optimized for every device. If you take payments too for anything, you can also make checkout seamless for your customers with simple but powerful payment tools. Accept credit cards, PayPal and Apple Pay, and in eligible countries offer customers the option to buy now and pay later with Afterpay and Clearpay. Squarespace also has the tools you need to create and sell your own online course. Start with a layout that fits your brand, upload videos and customize everything with next generation editing technology. Create engaging lessons your audience will love, then add a paywall and set the price. You can charge a one-time fee or sell subscriptions Take what you know and turn it into income with Squarespace courses. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash Simandan for 10% off your first purchase of any website or domain. Right, on with today's video, which is the first in a series of videos uh, documenting the fallout from the final experiment. In case you've been living under a rock for the past few months, the final experiment was a trip to Antarctica organized by Will Duffy. He took flat earthers and globe earthers to Union Glacier in Antarctica to witness the 24 hour sun, thus destroying one particular flat earth model, this one. Now, I'll be responding to normal videos on the final experiment as usual on a Friday. This series is more about what flat earthers are saying on social media and taking a look at some of their posts. But we start with the Final Experiment YouTube channel itself. Will has been busy still releasing videos. This one in particular is excellent, where Will has shown Anthony Powell's brilliant 24 hour time lapse of the moon. Once again, this proves that the AE flat earth map and model are not possible. Will has also posted videos showing the full, non-time-lapsed, unedited 24-hour sun from their trip as well. In my opinion, a necessary step to show the Flat Earthers that there is nothing to hide. Now take a look at Will's channel, the link is in the description. Have a look at it, subscribe, and check out for the inevitable updates that will be coming. Moving on though to probably one of the most unbelievable things to come from this trip, and something which has certainly happened a lot sooner than I thought. Now Jaron, who went to Antarctica, he saw the 24 hour sun, he witnessed it, and then admitted he was wrong about it, has one of the largest flat earth channels on YouTube, Jaronism. Now he has sensationally claimed that he is no longer a flat earther. Now, since this comment on Telegram, he has not released anything on his channel. And we're still waiting for some sort of verbal confirmation, but this is an extremely encouraging step. Now, I've contacted Jaron to see if he will finally come on the channels for an interview, and I await his reply. Incredible, incredible news. Of course, before this announcement, Jaron and Witsit, the other flat earth who went, were already starting to be ostracized by the flat earth community. Just by saying that they saw the 24 hour sun, they were wrong about it, and that the trip actually happened. I saw this on Twitter, a transvestigation already on Jaron. And it doesn't stop there, as Witsit got the same treatment as well. Have a look at this. If you're not truthful about your core identity and gender, then how are we supposed to believe anything you say? Witsit has a female skull. A woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now, even if Jaron or Witsit were trans, it would not make them wrong. They told the truth of what they saw and experienced. What else can they do? It speaks volumes of the Flat Earth community as a whole if this is their initial response. There was an interesting post on Twitter, though, from Caleb the Flat Earther. You remember him? Here he is. 
Now he made quite a surprising post. He said this, if you genuinely believe that Witsit and Geronism fake the 24 hour sun in a studio, you're a, I invite you to unfollow me and stop associating with me because I don't want to be coupled in with morons. Sorry, I could probably put this more lightly, but at this point it's just become so insane. So insane that I think it might be smart to split the community into two. One side of intelligent people that use logic to deduce what's going on and refrain from making statements without seeing all evidence and the other. There is far too much that screams that these people went down to Antarctica. If you see all the video and GoPro footage from Jaron and Austin, it's undeniable in my opinion. To claim they faked this all and are now controlled is the dumbest thing I've seen this community fall for. Interesting points from Caleb here and one in which I wasn't expecting from him. Of course, what Caleb failed to realise here is he forgot that he was a flat earther and he used the term went down to Antarctica. Oh dear Caleb, your globe side is showing. Now before the trip happened, Will, the organiser of the final experiment, he messaged Caleb and asked him if he would appear on modern day debates with him to predict what would happen in Antarctica with the sun. This was Caleb's response. The final experiment should be renamed to TNFO, the non-final observation. Even if you observe a 24 hour sun, it simply doesn't nullify our measurements and demonstrable facts that align with the laws of physics that the earth is level with topography and has no motion at all. It would be a very short conversation. The principles I'm inferring would necessitate the conversation immediately develop into a globe versus flat earth debate by providing evidence. So if you want to debate that, that's what the debate would turn into quickly with me. Hey Caleb, where did they go? Down to Antarctica, wasn't it? <laughs> Amazing. But what else were Flat Earthers saying about the final experiment? Well, of course, there was some extreme coping going on. Let's look at some of the Twitter and Facebook posts I've seen over the last two weeks. The final experiment fraud. Four different directions in one frame. Oh dear, someone doesn't understand how perspective works. This one can easily be debunked by watching the following TikTok. So that pole there and that pole there are casting shadows on the ground. You see that shadow is going that direction that shadow is going that direction. And the claim is that proves that that sun is local. Otherwise the shadows would be straight and parallel. Well, they actually are parallel. This is just a perspective. Now let's look at another perspective. Here we see the shadows look like they're spreading apart towards the bottom. As we get up higher and higher so we can see the entire picture, we start to see that they actually are parallel. We have a few more shadows come in the frame. They're also exactly parallel. And guess what would happen to those shadows in your picture if you viewed them from above, Mr. Planetera? Yeah, you got it, the exact same thing. I've seen several posts on shadows, all of them not understanding how perspective works. It's desperation of the highest order. Here's another one. The final experiment debunked Nice try, deceivers. This guy can't even draw his arrows straight, let alone understand perspective. Cope harder, guys. The next one I saw was this one. A claim that the time lapse is fake because there were some clouds in the sky at the start of the 24 hours, which were the same as those at the end of the 24 hours. Well, sorry to disappoint you, my friend, but those marks are not clouds. They're lens flares, appearing in the exact same position as they were before because the lens was in the exact same direction as it was before. This is a cloud, which is not present at the end of the time lapse. Dear oh dear, what a fail that one was. Now some other internet detectives have decided to review the team photo at Union Glacier. The implication here of course is that the mountain looks exactly the same, including its snow cover as it did eight years ago. I guess they're saying that the 2024 photo is a fake. Well, this one perhaps needs a bit more explanation. First off, the two photos were taken at very similar times of the year, only three weeks apart. So that means the climate at the time would have been very similar. Secondly, let's not forget that Antarctica is essentially a desert. The amount of precipitation that the Union Glacier gets per year is 0.2 meters. Now, 
given the extremely small amount of precipitation, the similar time of year, and the fact that geologically a mountain is almost identical as it would have been eight years before, it's certainly not outside the realms of probability that similar snow patterns would form on the side of that mountain. Desperation is still increasing, it seems. Well, there we go. Well, a lovely look back at some of the posts over the last two weeks regarding the final experiment. I'm sure in the next two weeks, we'll see even more. We'll wait with bated breath. What is clear though, is that the flat earthers are in panic mode and the meltdown is as bad as I expected it to be. For now though, we're all done and dusted. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of those reactions from the Flat Earthers. Thanks so much for watching today. It truly is appreciated. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel, hitting the thumbs up button too, and sharing the video as well if the feeling takes you. Just enough time to once again thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Remember, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. Then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Simon for 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website. I've been Simon Dan, have yourselves a cracking day and I'll see you all on Friday for Level Earth Observer's first reaction to the final experiment. It's going to be good. See you then.